This video is brought to you by Keeps. Stick around until the end of the video to learn more. If you've been conscious at all since the end of 2020, then you've probably heard about NFTs. One of the most explosive and controversial trends of 2021. What is an NFT? Well, I think it's that thing when you don't touch yourself during the month of November. Yeah, something like that, right? But actually, it stands for non-fungible token. And it is a digital collectible that lives on something called a blockchain and can be bought, sold, and speculated like a stock. Now, I'm sure that a bunch of NFT bros right now are going, no, no, it, it's much more than that. It's the future. It's a way of life. Well, you know what I have to say about that? I'm gonna download your NFT cartoon so I can review it. I remember earlier this year when some artist named Beeple made like $69 million by selling his art as an NFT. And I was floored. I was like, what did he sell exactly? And for how much? And the NFT floodgate has been breached ever since. There are those who are for NFTs and see it as a way to decentralize control over digital art and its worth. And then there are those who are against NFTs and claim that the cryptocurrency involved to fuel it does environmental damage and that NFTs are a chaotic world of scams and art theft. And then you got me, just watching the fireworks from the sidelines as I watch the world burn down to its core. That all being said, something popped up on my radar that was truly horrendous. And from the deepest pits of my nightmares, the Red Ape Family, the world's first, quote unquote, NFT cartoon. Now, I will be the first to admit that I'm still new to understanding NFTs. But a cartoon? How does that work? And what does that even mean? But hey, maybe I'm being closed-minded. Perhaps it's new and good, and I just need to give it a chill. Oh my goodness! Squidward! This looks awful. There is no doubt that the folks responsible for Red Ape Family did not care about the quality of the cartoon, but instead rushing to be the first to claim that they made an NFT cartoon and then sell it. And sell it they did. You want to know for how much? <laughs> you don't want to know for how much. <sighs> As of recording this video, it is worth 211 Ethereum which equates to around $1.8 million. That's right. This shoddy pilot that looks like it cost a few thousand dollars and a bologna sandwich to make was able to pull in almost $2 million. And that's not even including the NFT monkeys that probably paid for cameos in the pilot. So yeah, it's safe to say that I'm sickingly curious about NFTs because I just don't get it. How is this, or that, and especially that, worth hundreds of thousands of dollars? I am truly dumbfounded at the quality of the art. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills here. And I need to know more. So let's take a closer look at this cursed NFT cartoon. God help us. Take your sticking paws off me, you damn dirty ape. Hey, folks, real fast. I'm sorry, I left this out. Um, I have a plushie now, and you can order it off of Makeship. Um, yeah, you can do whatever you want to it. You can punch it in the face. You can throw it over your shoulder, throw it off the roof, put it in a jar. Go check out the link down below. So, how did the Red Ape family come into existence? Oddly enough, there's a lot of backstory leading up to the Red Ape family, but it has to do a lot with the overall history of NFTs and cryptocurrency a topic that is very big and very complicated. My friend Tom and I are currently working on a comprehensive video about NFTs. So go check that out when the video drops in January on our second channel. Go subscribe to SaberSpark64 right over there. So for now, we're just gonna focus specifically on the cartoon and its production and leave out any tangents about NFTs as a whole. Just know that people pay Ethereum, a cryptocurrency, in order to have partial or sole ownership of an NFT, and that includes the Red Ape family. 
Okay, moving on. So, from what I can gather, the production for The Red Ape Family was launched in August of 2021, since that is the earliest evidence I could find that was related to the project. According to this cryptocurrency podcast, Red Ape Family was solely funded by NFTs. <laughs> I like how you can just tell that these guys care more about the business side of marketing NFTs rather than the quality of the animation itself. I also find it amusing that one of the big arguments for NFTs is how it is decentralized. And then these guys immediately say that Amazon should buy the rights to this stuff. So I guess that argument goes flying out the window. I mean, I guess people who buy this NFT cartoon are looking at it more like an investment with revenue share and seeing the value increase due to the rising price of Ethereum or potential growth of specific NFTs due to people who might buy them? I, I really don't know, guys. I'm trying my best to understand this. I am old now, and the future scares me. Future. To no one's surprise, this cartoon is based around the NFT collection called Bored Ape Yacht Club. It was founded in April of 2021, and it's one of the most trendy NFT collections at the moment. You know the ones, the cookie cutter, designs and they look incredibly ugly. Yeah, that one. Red Ape Family also totes around the title of being the first NFT cartoon, though that title actually belongs to a series called Stoner Cats, which came out like five months ago. Also, it looks much better, but let's be honest, that's not saying much here. So Red Ape Family was created by a guy named Hashim Azani. The production was based out of Dubai and was done by an animation studio called Zany Media. Needless to say, this guy is like the linchpin of the entire operation. He seems to be a jack of all trade when it comes to media, as he is a writer, director, producer, animator, and is overall just an entrepreneur. Which kind of explains why he's getting into the NFT craze. Another world to dominate, right? Other people include Chris Goward, the writer of Red Ape. Let's see what else he's worked on here. Oh. <laughs> and like I said, the entire series is very proud about 2 Chains and his involvement, probably because he's a big name and has connections, and that is obviously much more important than finding good artists and paying them enough to make a pilot for your series. And the worst part, the folks who make this series and the ones who support it seem completely blind or deliberately ignorant to how bad it actually is. Hashim even compared Red Ape Family to The Simpsons and said his cartoon pilot was better than theirs. Br bruh, for real? F for real, are you saying this in actuality? Do you believe it? Because that is not true. And I even did something that I've never done before. I went incognito to investigate the Discord server for Red Ape Family. Now, for the record, it was a public invite. Anybody could have joined. So there was nothing nefarious on my end except for checking out what was already publicly said. Of course, I needed a disguise for this occasion. Perfect. Uh, I'm Paul. Let's see. Oh, here's a comment about the series getting on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon. Is it true? Well, not at the moment. Oh, look here. They posted the episode on the server, and even their own supporters think it is trash. And finally, I got booted from the server for the following comment. I was trying to be a good person and alert them that the first episode could actually be downloaded. And they banned me for it. I don't know why. I was just trying to be good, trying to do my part. Why do they hate me? <laughs> All in all, this entire production seems to be more about selling this idea than making a good product. And I guess they got what they wanted. Cause sweet lord, look at that profit. No doubt it outweighs the time, talent, and effort that went into this trash. Now for the record, I hold no ill will against the artists and animators who were told to do a job. But I will hold the creative leaders accountable. They seem much more focused on the clout chasing than the art itself. To be honest, I bet the NFT owners involved in this project don't even care about the animation, as this pilot has obviously demonstrated for us. It's all about who likes it, who owns it, whose name is attached to it. And that is why you see so many headlines featuring actors and businessmen and celebrities 
Oh, they do NFTs. They're involved. It's two chains. I better get in on it because he's involved. And that means the art is completely glossed over. That comes second. Who's involved comes first. And let me tell you, if you think that's bad, <laughs> wait till you see the episode itself. Well, you better limber up, buddy. We've got a bus to move. Oh, you're working for the Buskville Council? Well, why did you say so? So, what is the Red Ape Family about? For the record, I realize that my synopsis run down here is going to come across as deliberately mean and confusing, as if I'm trying to make the cartoon look bad. Some of y'all might go, Saber, come now. It couldn't be that terrible now, could it? Uh, yeah, it actually is. I suffered this episode four times in an attempt to try and understand the plot and the characters and what they were about. And this is the best summary I could come up with. So it is the year 2130 and the earth is dying. According to them, uh, humans messed it up. Geez, I wonder how. And now a family of apes leave earth and go to Mars for reasons. Oh, by the way, this information was not mentioned in the pilot. It was mentioned, get this, in the trailer, but was left out of the first episode. <laughs> what? That's a huge mistake. There's even a typo within the first minute of the pilot. How is this real? How do people pay for this garbage? And I can't even tell you who exactly the characters are. The pilot doesn't even bother to list the names of the characters for each respective voice actor in the credits. It's all just a big mess. So Daddy Ape here tries to do his stupid Cowboy Bebop intro ripoff. Looks awful. Worse than Netflix's version. Oof, that's an insult. And then Dad Ape here steals some flash stick. And then Mommy Ape here has a very cringy conversation about how this NFT file on this flash drive is more valuable than the city of Paris. Here, watch for yourself. All you need to know is that it actually is worth more than the entire city of Paris. Including the Eiffel Tower? Yes, including the Eiffel Tower. The Ape family then goes to Mars, don't know why, by flying on the Musk One. I'm in pain. The family includes daddy, mommy, dog, two children. I think they're children, I guess. And then the family's lazy lion doctor who sounds like off-brand Ugandan knuckles. What are you talking about? That is not very nice. There's also like these two British guys who are like, they're, they're leaving. What's the context? Why are they here? What's happening? Some other NFT like collectibles are in the shorts. Uh, okay. Donald Trump's there, a skull guy. Uh, of course, some shameless website plugs on literal billboards. And then these two other apes at the end who are like the neighbors spying on the ape family that just showed up. And then that's it. That's the short. An eight minute long video that has two minutes of credits that cost $2 million in value. <laughs> so what are my overall thoughts about the Red Ape family? I'm pretty sure you all can probably guess. The story, awful and virtually non-existent. The dialogue, cringy and awkward. Just a bunch of NFT and crypto inside jokes. The characters, ugly and unlikable. And then there's the animation. <laughs> it looks cheap, low quality and flat. It's weird because the animatic itself looks pretty competent with the concepts and the movement. But then you see the final product and yuck. I imagine that they masked out the apes and other NFT models, poorly, might I add, and then used some kind of skeleton rig in order to move them. Perhaps the animation program Moho was used. I'm not entirely sure. But what I do know is that this pilot is ugly. And all of these people cheering for it at its premiere have no idea what the word quality means. Boo, you stink! So in conclusion, Reddit Family is an uninspired cash grab that was made with the sole purpose of playing off of people's emotions rather than artistic merit. Ooh, we made an NFT cartoon. You better buy it because just the fact that it's the first, quote unquote, makes it worth owning as an NFT. <laughs> I genuinely wonder if the people who bought a token for this cartoon actually think it's any good, because it is not. 
Like if you bought it for bragging rights to say that you own a token for the first NFT cartoon, I suppose I can somewhat understand that silly perspective. But bro, NFT bro, you right there, look me in the eyes and tell me that you think that this is good. Do it. You can't, cause it's not. I have seen better amateur cartoons on Newgrounds back in the early 2000s. And here's the part that hurts the most. NFTs aren't going anywhere. And if anything, they're going to keep growing at an exponential rate. These NFT cartoons will continue to make even more money because people see crypto and NFTs as the next big thing. And they want a piece of it no matter how absurd the digital assets may be, which honestly makes me sad. It's not about artistic merit or quality or craftsmanship. It's about clout and bragging rights. But I guess that's just the world we live in now. NFTs, cryptocurrency, and the metaverse. And speaking of that, I think it's time for my workout. My God, my Lord, just give me a time machine and let me go back to Club Penguin and just leave me there. So a big shout out to this video sponsor, Keeps. Getting old blows. Trust me, I know, you'll know, we all will know. And a common issue us guys run into is hair loss. <sighs> SpongeBob, I have a confession to make. Steve, you're bald. No, I'm not bald. Did you know that two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time that they're 35? Yeah, it's that common. And the best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have hair left. And that is where Keeps comes in. What is Keeps, you ask? Well, it's a subscription service that focuses on making it easier and more affordable for men to treat their male pattern baldness. But doing so online. You got online doctor consultations with real licensed doctors. They will review your information and will then recommend a hair loss treatment plan for you. A plan that offers generic options of the FDA-approved medications for hair loss. That means that these treatments are legit and are way more affordable. And with Keeps, your treatment is shipped directly to your door every three months. And guys, communication is key when it comes to this stuff. It can honestly be kind of intimidating at first, but don't worry. Your doctor is always a message away and can be accessed through online doctor messaging 24-7. Do you have questions or concerns about your progress? Well, hit up your doctor online and also track your progress with Keeps Progress Tracking Tool. Once you get everything up and running with your Keeps treatment, you'll start to see results between four to six months. So if you want to save the hair that you have left, you better act on this fast. Keeps is legit one of the best services when it comes to fighting male pattern baldness. There's a reason why it has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors, and also why hundreds of thousands of men trust Keeps for their hair loss prevention. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, then go to keeps.com slash saberspark or click the link in the description down below to receive 50% off your first order. That is K-E-E-P-S dot com slash saberspark. Go check them out today.